What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out 10 worst WWE tag team breakups. Now, we have seen it time and time again a tag team, they dominate, the fans love, they have great matches, pretty good title reigns, and then uh, WWE or you know, whatever wrestling company decides to do the good old classic break up the tag team angle to create some type of potential feud with uh said wrestlers and we've seen it so many times so it's going to be interesting to go back down memory lane and check out some of these infamous tag team breakup situations appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel let's get right into this one man disease in the eyes of Vince McMahon, WWE has seen plenty of tag teams split up over the years. While some partings have gone down in history, see that coward Marty Jannetty trying to escape Shawn Michaels through the barbershop window, some have been far less impressive. Yeah. Today we are ranking the breakups based on how they went down, what happened after, and all the money that was left on the table. Yep. Trust me, there was a lot of it. A lot of the money. Cheesy from Cult of Wrestling, and these are the 10 worst WWE tag Tag team breakups. Join us. Number 10, the smoking guns. Before Billy was daddy ass and before Bart was cannon fodder for Butterbean, this pair of kayfabe brothers were a tag team by the name of the smoking guns. The pair debuted together in 1993 Damn. and would go on to win three sets of world tag team titles. Cracks started to appear in the siblings' relationship when manager Sonny abandoned them in 1996. This led to Billy walking out on Bart during a match, costing his team the win. Hang on a second, Bart won the match anyway. So what was the point of Billy walking out on him like that? That's so stupid. So he still wins the match. What was the point of him walking out? What, what does that do? He still won. Anyway, the two men continued to butt heads throughout the rest of the year. They were opposite sides of a match at Survivor Series, well, the pre-show anyway, and then squared off in a singles match on Raw, which ended after five minutes when Bart dropped Billy on the top rope and gave him a neck injury. By the time they finally had a conclusive blow-off match, the tiny amount of momentum from their underwhelming mm -hmm. split had fizzled out and died. People didn't really fact, care Billy as much. Was even calling himself Rockabilly by this point, which should tell you all you need to know. Number 9, Y2AJ. When AJ Styles first debuted for WWE at the 2016 Royal Rumble, I think the I may remember this vaguely. A mock with ideas of dream matches and feuds for the phenomenal one. He soon settled into a program with Chris Jericho, mm -hmm. whom he beat at Fastlane. Jericho then extended the olive branch to his adversary, saying that they should form a tag team together. Thus, Y2AJ was born. Y2AJ quickly picked up a pair of wins over tag champs mm -hmm. the new day, leading to a title match between the two duos on Raw. The champions retained, which led to Jericho turning on his partner yep. after all of three weeks together. Yeah, I, I, it was, it, that, it's one of those things where I vaguely remember it, but they had something. Y2AJ, that could have worked. I don't know why WWE didn't run with that long. You could have had Jericho turn on him later on, but get some money behind. But the merch of that. Just imagine the merch alone. Potentially, they pretty much left on the table. Why two AJ shirts? I think people would have definitely bought into that. Could have made some money. Styles and Jericho went through about half a year's worth of storyline beats in less than a month. They feuded, got together, split up, and then they had a match at WrestleMania. Putting these two in a team in the first place was a bit of a weird idea, and their breakup shortly thereafter was even stranger. By the way, if anyone out there actually bought one of those Y2AJ t-shirts, then please tell me. I'm yeah. so curious. Number eight. I mean, they could have made some money off that. Just really ran with that. You know, more money. They, they definitely left some money on the table, for sure. Prime time players. The primetime players of Titus O'Neil and Darren Young them. have the notable exception of being part of not one, but two failed breakup storylines. First appearing as a unit in 2012, PTP went on a decent little run in the tag division, coming close to winning the straps on several occasions. Unfortunately, even with their million dollar moves, O'Neill and Young didn't stay on the same page for long. Mm -hmm. Titus attacked Darren in early 2014, turning the big man heel and leading to a major grudge match at Elimination Chamber. That battle was so intense, so violent, so emotional, <laughs> that their rematch ended up being on an episode of Main Event. What an upgrade. 
A year later, the two former friends reunited once again and even ended up winning the WWE Tag Team Championships. After that reign ended, they fell into obscurity. And yep. then guess what happened? They broke up again. turned on young again. <laughs> when will you learn, Darren? Anyway, this feud didn't even get a pay-per-view blow-off, instead culminating in a lackluster match on Raw. But hey, Bob Backlund was involved this time. That's got to be worth something, right? Yeah. Right? Uh. Number seven, the Bella Twins. Nikki and Brie Garcia, as they are now known, turned on each other so many times in WWE mm. that it would be impossible to recount every mm. single story beat in one entry. And it would also be really boring. <laughs> in 2014, they actually provided fans with quite a bit of excitement. Brie was wrestling Stephanie McMahon after the former came to her husband Daniel Bryan's aid against the authority. Yep. Just when it looked like she had the boss's daughter beat, Brie was viciously assaulted by her own sister mm -hmm. and Steph picked up the win. Wow, what a shocking moment. I hope the rest of the storyline's this good. Nope. Well, what followed was months and months of unbearable television. The twins had a pair of failed interventions on Raw, including the infamous Died in the Womb segment, before Nikki beat Brie in a match that made the loser the servant of the winner. Yeah. And what happened after that? Brie sided with her sister again by kissing AJ Lee at Survivor Series to help Nikki win the Divas Championship. We are so far removed from that great SummerSlam moment that it, it made absolute no sense. <laughs> Just get this off my screen. <laughs> it's but a mere dot on the horizon. Number six, heavy machinery. Many an eyebrow was raised when Otis won the 2020 Men's Money in For the sure. Bank, and not in a cool Dwayne Johnson yeah. kind of way. Otis was popular, but was he really ready to be the next world champion? The answer was, unfortunately, no. no. WWE seemingly realized they had made a mistake yes, and they did. Man to lose his briefcase to The Miz at Hell in a Cell. Just to make Otis look even more of a loser, they had his long-term partner Tucker turn on him too. Yep. Starting in NXT as heavy machinery, Tucky and Otis were called up to the main roster in 2019. They never won tag team gold, but were solidly over thanks to their obvious chemistry. Mm -hmm. This all came to an end when Tucker betrayed his ham loving friend because of reasons, reasons and we never Something really found out playing second fiddle i don't know it was all yeah. a bit half-heartedly so did the two men ever get a chance to fight each other in the ring like balls they did mm. tucker essentially vanished from our screens made an appearance in the andre the giant memorial battle royal on smackdown and then got released a week later yep chad gable would never number five <laughs> Bruce Day. you there boy what day is it why, it's Christmas Day, sir. No, you moron. It's obviously Rusev Day. Because every day is Rusev Day. What began as a silly little joke quickly turned mm -hmm. into a wildly popular tag team and stable featuring Rusev, Aiden English, and Lana. The reaction Rusev and English got at Clash of Champions 2017 was insane, and the yeah. company should have just put the tag belts on them then and there. But they didn't. However, WWE did decide to clunkily break up the group about a year later. Things got a bit weird when English turned on the future Miro and began proclaiming to have slept with his wife. Yeah, Thankfully, this was... this wasn't true. So after debunking the affair, Rusev beat English on a random episode of SmackDown and that was that. He would turn heel and join forces with... They literally just dropped the ball on one of their hottest acts because he got over without them wanting him to get over. It was just the... The situation where someone actually grabs the brass ring, gets over, and they didn't really like the way that he got over. So they just kind of buried it. it. Stupid. Shinsuke Nakamura shortly thereafter. How WWE didn't make a bigger deal out of Rusev Day is still baffling. Stupid. It was a bona fide phenomenon that elevated every person involved, and yet it led to nothing. Stupid. Four, That's all I can say. Cass, oh, I know. I knew this had to be on the list. This had to be on the list. They, oh, they, they were the most over tag team in WWE. And they dropped the ball. S T E D. Wasted potential. 
Facts. Those two words perfectly sum up Enzo Amore and Big Cass, who were easily one of the most popular tandems around at the time. Mm -hmm. From their rise in NXT to their transfer to the main roster, Enzo and Cass wowed crowds with their charisma, solid tag team wrestling, and never-ending conveyor belt of catchphrases. Facts. Over the summer of 2017, both men were mysteriously attacked backstage. After Corey Graves decided to lead an investigation into the assaults, it was revealed that the man behind it all was... Big Cass. Yes. Turns out he had attacked Enzo and then faked his own attack to come back. <laughs> but all right then. They had a pay-per-view match at Great Balls of Fire, which Cass won. Then came SummerSlam, where Cass fought Big Show whilst Enzo was suspended above the ring in a shark cage. How the hell did that happen? The feud ended unexpectedly when Cass legitimately hurt himself during a street fight on Raw. The thing is, the worst part of it all was that this breakup never really needed to happen in the first no. place. The act was actually fine as it was. As I said, wasted potential. Super Number wasted three, potential. The Legion of Doom. Sometimes weaving a wrestler's personal life into a gimmick can be a highly effective way to add realism to a story. Mm -hmm. However, when their personal life includes a very real addiction to drugs and alcohol, maybe it's best left alone. Because WWE have all the tact of an elephant being dropped from a plane, <laughs> they decided to incorporate Road Warrior Hawk's substance abuse issues into the breakup of beloved tag team The Legion of Doom. In storyline, Road Warrior Animal was sick of Hawk's unreliability and so replaced him with Darren Drozdov, whose nickname was Puke. Again, tact. Things were already really? bad when the promotion decided to really push the boundaries of good taste by having Hawk climb up the Titan Tron on Raw and claim that he was going to jump. Dross Whoa. went up to save him, but ended up pushing the Road Warrior off instead. I mean, that's one way to break up a team Whoa. by killing off one of the members. The whole thing got over like cholera, so the angle was dropped and both men left the company shortly afterwards. Jeez. Number two, the Oh, yeah, you, 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 you definitely can't do nothing like that now. Is and Damien Mizdow. When it comes to creating chicken salad from chicken, well, you know, there yeah. are a few better examples in wrestling history than Damien Sandow and his stunt double gimmick. <laughs> in 2014, the newly branded Damien Mizdow was brought in as a second to the Miz during his Hollywood A-lister gimmick. As his stunt double, Mizdow would take all the stunt bumps <laughs> as his employer during his matches, despite the fact that he himself wasn't actually wrestling anyone. <laughs> this duo got massively over and even landed the pair the WWE Tag Team titles at Survivor Series. After months of being belittled by the wannabe megastar, mm -hmm. Miz now finally snapped and threw Miz out of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle it was a Royal good moment. a huge ovation. And that is when it all started to go downhill. Sandow, who reverted back to his original name, got the better of Miz a few times, but would eventually lose a match on Raw to determine the owner of the Miz name. He then went back to his old impersonator gimmick, vanished for an age, and got cut in yep. 2016. They seriously had one of the hottest storylines in the company at the time, and they didn't even get a pay-per-view match out of it. Mm -mm. What a bloody tragedy. Number one, the Dudley Boys. Mm. We try to avoid tag teams being split up by drafts on this list, as yeah. they happen all the time. However, one example stands out above the rest in terms of how stupid an idea it was. Bubba yep. Ray and Devon had always been presented as a cohesive unit following their WWE debut in 1999. Mm -hmm. Then, during the inaugural 2002 brand split, Bubba was drafted to Raw and Devon to SmackDown. I mean, if you were Vince McMahon or Ric Flair, why would you not just draft both men over as a yeah, team? Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Actually scratch that. Both of those guys have a history of making very bad decisions. Mm, that too. Bubba fought in the hardcore division for a bit, while Devon became a reverend and introduced the world to Deacon Batista. Yep. They achieved very little on their own and were back together on Raw before the year was out. Sure, it's nice to try new things, but can you really call what WWE did with the Dudleys trying? If they were going mm -mm. to split them up, then they should have had better plans for them, but at least they were put back together before too much damage had been done. And that's the thing, that right? if you're going to split somebody up, a, a group like that, a group that is known for being as over as they as they were together, got to have a plan for them, but they... they the plan they did have for them didn't really work, so it was no point, and then you put them back together anyway. So comment down below. Let me know some of the worst tag team breakups of all time if they weren't on this list. Um, let me know some that you personally feel like should have been on this list, or in your opinion, some of the worst breakups in tag team 
history in WWE. Me, it got to be Enzo and Cass. They had something there special, and they just dropped the ball for no reason other than to just do it. It, it made no sense. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on channel road to 150k. And I'm still getting the speed of YouTube wrestling champion world. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See y'all next one. Peace.